Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar titled Patient Payment Trends 2022, Learn All the Secrets. My name is Jeanette Weider and I'm Managing Editor of Healthcare Innovation. Today's program is sponsored by MEND. Thank you to our sponsor and to our audience for giving us your time and attention today. Before we get started, we have a few housekeeping details. To submit a question, please use the Q&A box to the left of your video window at any time. You do not have to wait until the end of the program. For technical issues, please press F5 to refresh. And if that doesn't work, you can submit a question with your issue through the Q&A panel. Finally, join our webinar conversation on Twitter. You can tweet using the hashtag HILiveWebinar. At this time, I'd like to introduce Matt McBride, CEO and co-founder at MEND, and Brooke Steffen, Junior Marketing Coordinator at MEND. Brooke, I'll hand it off to you. Thanks so much, Jeanette, for that introduction. We appreciate it. Um, so let's go ahead and start our webinar. Our agenda is rather simple today, but it is packed with opportunities to get paid faster with full automation. Matt is going to take us through industry insights and cover how to automate patient payments. And finally, we'll round out today's webinar with a Q&A session. Starting now, you can use the Q&A box at the bottom, and we'll get to as many questions as we can at the end. Let's go ahead and kick off our agenda with industry payment insights. Matt, what are consumers reporting around their expectations for healthcare payments? Yeah, thanks, Brooke. Um, <clears throat> so I think, you know, we're, we're all, uh, patients, right? I mean, everybody participates in the healthcare system. We've all seen different ways of paying in other industries. And we're going to talk about some more specifically, and it even shows in the data. So even from our own perspective, maybe, in, and how do we want to pay ourselves to what does some of the market research say? So Starting at the top, 91% of consumers prefer electronic payment methods for medical bills. So uh, electronic payments are just taking over uh, everywhere. Probably every, almost every payment you make these days are, are electronic in one form or fashion. 60% um, of consumers expect their digital healthcare experience to mirror that of retail. And we'll kind of show you where retail stacks up among uh, other industries and healthcare as well, a little later in the presentation. But retail is usually a pretty uh, easy experience. You can tap card, maybe you have a card on file as you shop online. Um, so paying is usually, you know, pretty quick, pretty, pretty easy. And that's what consumers are looking for. Um, and then 45% uh, of patients would pay faster if notified by email, text, or phone. Uh, probably more on the email and, and text side, uh, but you know, getting cash flow in faster, reducing AR days, what accounting department, what revenue cycle department wouldn't want to speed up a cash collection? So I think there's some opportunities based on you know, what options you give your customer base. If I have an outstanding balance, I usually receive a paper bill U.S. Bank surveyed over 1,100 people across all 50 states. Matt, what does this data tell us? Yeah, so the majority of people are still receiving paper statements. Now, there might be, you know, a link to a portal, a QR code to a portal or, or something like that. Um, and But sometimes those statements can be pretty tricky to even find the right information that you need to pull up your invoice, make the payment. There's easier ways. Um, some surveys say that as high as 75% of patients are still receiving paper statements uh, in the mail. So um, not only are there costs, there's delays, so there's opportunity there. And then you can see uh, on the other side of the equation where where we've started to see, you know, early adopters taking advantage of, you know, phone calls, um, text messages, apps. So providing some easier experiences upon which to make a payment. 
In terms of the 24% for online portals, there's probably a lot of online portals associated with the paper statements, but really I think uh, consumers are looking for um, you know, a text, an, an email, a phone call, some, some way to then just seamlessly, easily you know, understand their bill and make a payment uh, uh, quickly without any friction in the process. The U.S. bank survey also asked respondents about the most difficult payment processes. Matt, what do these insights tell us? Yeah, so I, I, I mean, just kind of looking at the slide visually, healthcare is really in a league of its own when it comes to, unfortunately, being ranked for difficult payment experiences. Um, and you can see retail is on the other side of the equation. And if you think of how easy it is in retail to just, you know, tap your phone, insert a card, or just use a card online that you already have on file, or maybe that gets auto-filled uh, for you, uh, the payment step is is uh, just quick and 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 painless. Um, and then just looking at some of these other industries, we've all probably participated in these industries, but let's just look at each one really quickly here. Restaurant, and it's usually very easy. Uh, maybe you insert insert a card if it's fast food, or you you know hand the card to a a server and they they take care of the payment for you. So that's pretty easy. The grocery store, pretty simple. Um, you know, just tap or or swipe your card. Um, hotel. Now they usually you have to put a card on file to book um, and then they, they keep the card on file. And then when you leave, maybe you drop your keys in a, in a box and they just charge you automatically. So they just secure a card on file and then the billing is automatic. Uh, so very, very easy. Um, banking, you know, banking has gotten a lot easier with apps and they uh, also offer bill pay. So they provide uh, an online portal for maybe uh, services and vendors that still require uh, checks. Uh, so they've kind of simplified that process where you don't have to write and mail checks. The airline industry, um, again, usually pretty much everything online. And maybe, you know, this could uh, potentially be uh, somewhat similar to uh, the healthcare if you have a, a you know a scheduling and, and digital check-in experience as well for payments, but with an airline you can usually go through the whole process, uh, upgrade seats, add luggage, and then just quickly enter in a credit card or use the credit card for your original reservation and just make that payment. And then you see telecom here uh, towards the tail end, and for the most part. You know, there's there's probably some options to opt in to auto pay, maybe for your cell phone bill for utilities. You know, maybe you're using your banking bill pay or or still writing a check. Um, but then you can we can sort of see then healthcare is in a league of its own. So I think patients, consumers, are definitely uh, communicating and saying that they're open to more modern and electronic methods of paying for their healthcare services. On one side, patient satisfaction and retention are very important. And on the other side, healthcare organizations need cash flow to run their operations. What do some of the other industry reports tell us? Yes, yeah, so from a retention perspective, um, you know, the some of the data varies amongst different studies. You could see some studies say, you know, it's as high as 90%, 90% of all people would consider switching if you didn't have a good payment experience with your doctor. That seems a little high, but um, looking at the younger generations, the younger generations probably are more likely to switch. And so you can see 75% of millennial patients. And not only based on the payment experience, we see this in the data for being able to schedule their own appointment, change their own appointment, you know how they're communicated with for appointment reminders, how they do their forms. So that, that whole digital experience from some of these younger generations on down is really going to have an effect on retention. And a lot of the younger 
folks are going to gravitate towards those easy, digital, frictionless experiences. So definitely something uh, to sort of key into and think about. Then um, we see 70% of providers said it takes more than 30 days to collect a payment. So that's a long time. And if it takes more than 30 days, if it takes sending two statements, two paper statements, not only is there uh, expenses from sending those statements, but just the delay in, in cash flow. And then 74% said it takes more uh, than one statement to collect. So um, the majority of the time, maybe it's actually taking 45, 60 days or longer. So there's, there's definitely opportunities to introduce convenience and be rewarded with a reduction in AR days. Men take security very seriously. We are SOC 2 Type 2 certified based on high trust. MEND is also PCI compliant and follows the NIST framework. Matt, how do consumers feel about security when making a payment? Yeah, so we thought this was really some interesting data um, because there's all of these different modern ways to pay from you've got sort of the Alexa to a kiosk all the way to maybe front desk, reception, PayPal. Um, and if you, if you look at these, um, a lot of it has to do with uh, maybe how uh, accessible your credit card information is um, and how, uh, so, you know, the front desk reception, um, it, it ranks the lowest, but you probably feel pretty secure if you hand somebody a card or maybe you even just swipe the card yourself. So you never lose possession of your card. Or if you do have to hand the card to somebody and they swipe it, you, you know, they're, they're right there in front of you. They can, you can make sure they're not, they're not writing the number down or taking a picture of it. So you can kind of see where this ranks, um, but this slide isn't about, oh, well, this is the, this is the best way to, to do it, and you should accept payments this way. I think what this slide is, is telling us is that consumers care about security and the protection of their credit card information because we've all had that bill, that charge show up that we didn't recognize that we had to then go and dispute or maybe something worse happened and, and identity was stolen, what, so on and so forth. So I think no matter what solution you go with, I think what this slide is telling us is it's important to communicate to patients and let them know that you take security seriously and that if you have this modern way to pay, so for example, if MEND was your solution for payments, MEND never sees the credit card. The credit card never touches our systems. The credit card never touches your systems at all. Everything is processed securely. So nobody from your staff, nobody from men's staff could go in and, and ever see that credit card or get that, that credit card. It just becomes a token. So those types of things, I think, are things you want to communicate. Because if you look at this data, the majority of people are concerned uh, about how they're paying, the security around how they're paying. And so uh, communicating that is going to be an important part uh, if you do decide to go with any electronic form of payment. Before we move on to the next section, patient financial engagement is relatively new. Matt, what can we learn from early adopters? Yeah, so class did some research, and I think the numbers are pretty phenomenal, and it makes sense. I mean, we see this in telemedicine as well, right? Telemedicine, you give some the convenience of not having to travel and go into a physical location, and you go from a 23% no-show rate to single digits. You could You see where consumers are ranking healthcare in terms of payments, and it's um, you know, distant from every other industry, you give a little convenience, you remove the friction, get rid of the paper, 
And there's all kinds of potential rewards to your organization for pursuing some form of modern patient financial engagement. So according to some of the class research, 46% saw an ROI immediately. You have 64% uh, reported an increase in collections. So um, the majority uh, increased total collections. 55% um, reduced costs, 27% saw a reduction in AR days, which is huge, and then patient satisfaction as well. Also, uh, they received a, a bump in, in satisfaction scores, which are you know more important these days for re reviews, different government initiatives, so on and so forth, to make sure you retain uh, patients for the long term. So there's, there's definitely opportunities um, and, uh, you know, a relatively small investment is going to pay off if your organization decides to remove the friction from the payment experience. Okay, it's time for an audience poll question. Our question for everyone today is, how do you handle patient payments today? We have about five options here. One, paper bills, two, patient portal, three, app, four, text message, or other. And we'll give everyone a few minutes to answer, and then we can share the results, and then we'll move on to finish today's presentation. Looks like the results are coming in, so we'll give everybody a couple minutes. All right, so it's looking like uh, paper bills ranked at the top. Um, next is uh, a, a portal or a patient portal. Um, sometimes those go hand in hand. Um, for uh, the, we've got about 20% for app, which is you know fairly consistent with the slide that we showed. And then we've got other that, uh, you know, maybe 20% or less. So I think even uh, just with uh, a small sample size here um, and actually still kind of seeing paper bills still continue to, to increase, um, even just our small sample size, it still seems like, and uh, you know, we've, we've asked other audiences, paper bills still ranks at the top. So I think there's definitely an opportunity to make a positive impact in your organization in a number of ways that we just covered on the previous slide. Thanks, Matt, for that. And thank you everyone for participating. We'll move on with our webinar. It seems that all sorts of businesses are going mobile with payments. For example, the Starbucks app. Matt, what is MEN doing to modernize healthcare payments? Yeah, and, and so just to kind of to set up this section a little bit, we're going to talk through our process and our product, use that as an example a little bit. And then we're also going to talk about some of the regulatory uh, changes um, that happened last year in 2021 that, that opened the door. You know, why, why is healthcare stuck on paper statements? Um, the the rules and regulations just didn't quite allow for some of these uh, modern communication methods, and now the door is open. But um, so just using uh, our platform as an example, you know, we can uh, grab that outstanding balance. We can get an email and text to the patient immediately. Uh, we don't have to have uh, any sort of uh, paper statement cycle. Uh, we can get the 
the, the text and email out immediately, the patient can effortlessly make a payment with a card that's stored on file. And then any payment that's received, we mark that back in the medical billing system so that everything is accurate and uh, up to date from a, an accounting perspective. The other method that we have too is um, to, you know, if your organization wants to get authorization from patients to automatically charge the card, just like we do when we go to a hotel, and we saw how that industry ranked relative to healthcare, um, we can also just automatically charge a card on file as long as uh, you know, you're following the, the best practices there for uh, getting folks to, to opt into that. So in, um, we're seeing you know, great results again when you introduce that convenience, remove the friction, there's some uh, you know, big opportunities. It looks like we have the entire process fully automated for a healthcare organization. Matt, talk us through the patient experience. Yeah, so just to give a little more context, um, we're just going to take everybody through a quick scenario. So this isn't a men's screen. This is just a generic medical billing system, right? So. Um, if you want to go ahead and, and uh, click to start it, Brooke. Um, when the system determines that there is a patient balance, that information can be integrated and sent to MEND. We can have different logic and rules uh, that, that run. So up next. We can make sure, you know, it's not a dollar that's owed. If it's, if there's, uh, you know, maybe a lot of money that's owed, we might go down a different path. Um, so there's different rules and different logic that we can set up um, so that we provide the best experience possible. And then up next. We can either charge the card automatically or get a form uh, or a digital invoice out to the patient via email and text message. And so uh, the patient can just click the link, which Brooke will do. They'll simply enter in their birth date. Everybody knows their, their birth date, usually a pretty fun day. Up next. Uh, any consents that we want to collect, which we're going to talk through that. Um, so we'll uh, uh, help guide you and help you understand best practices for what types of consents and things that you want to have on file to protect your organization. So the patient will just agree to the consents and then up next. Then they're in and we can send them a PDF uh, version of the statement. We can give them simple explanations of what they're being uh, billed for, why, date of service. We can put the amount. Um, they can have a card on file and then just simply click submit at the bottom. And that's it. The payment is made. So literally with just a link, uh, date of birth, they're in. They can review everything, see all the charges, make the payment effortlessly. And then we go ahead and write that back into the medical billing system. Thanks so Matt, much, Matt, for walking us through that. The patient side looks very user-friendly. Matt, what kind of results are we seeing so far? Yes, yeah, so for uh, digital invoices that we send out, Again, we have other scenarios where we can charge the card automatically, and um, those results can be even better. Uh, but um, in scenarios where we have to send a digital invoice out, we're seeing about 72% come back overall and about 44% coming back within 24 hours. So, um, Imagine sending a paper statement and then waiting 30 days or longer, having to send a second statement where this is 
automatic. You know, you could take AR days from, you know, a month to uh, a week. So there's huge opportunities um, to introduce convenience into the process. A 72% completion rate is pretty incredible. Matt, what are the secrets to achieving high engagement rates around patient payments? Yeah, so, you know, one of the first things that we want to do is we want to make sure that we're hitting the inbox. So we want to make sure, um, you know, that we have the correct contact information. So we're going to look at how many, you know, what is your unreachable percentage? What is your reachable percentage? Or is there a gap in the contact information that we have? So we're going to make sure that the contact information is healthy. Then we're going to send the SMS in a way that we know is going to ensure that it hits the inbox. And then for email as well, we're a certified email sender. So our email practices are audited. This means that uh, it's communicated to all of the internet service providers that MEND is a certified sender, an audited certified sender of email. So our emails bypass the spam filters and go into the inbox. Our emails don't go to the promotions tab, the spam, the junk, all of that. Our practices are audited, certified, our emails are going to hit the inbox. Our SMS is going to hit the inbox. That's a that's a huge step in the process, right? Because you, about 90% of all text messages are read within three minutes. So you get to the inbox, 90% of people are going to see that within three minutes. If somebody puts a piece of mail on my mailbox, I might not see it for a week. Um, but if you text somebody, it uh, completely changes the game. Um, from there, it's really just about convenience and providing a frictionless experience. So making sure there's no logins, there's no signups, there's no downloads. You don't have to find, uh, you know, hunt down an invoice number and then this other code and go find this portal. Um, you know, it, it's, it's your own date of birth. That's all you need. And you can go in and make the payment. Store cards on file so that uh, it's easy for future use. And then we also have instant technical support available. So um, we have extended hours of support within 20 seconds. If somebody was struggling on one of those forms, we have tech support, U.S.-based tech support that's available within seconds that can help them and, uh, you know, uh, ensures that more payments happen. For those that don't know, text messaging was invented in the UK in the 80s and 90s. It has been evolving ever since, and the laws have had to keep up. Matt, what are some of the recent changes in federal laws concerning texting? Yeah, absolutely. And so the Telephone Consumer Protection Act of 1991 um, that began the process of trying to protect consumers really from, uh, you know, maybe receiving too many junk phone calls, text messages. These things were not always unlimited. You know, phone plans were not always unlimited. Text message plans were not always unlimited. They're, they're still, you know, pay as you go type plans. And so the government, you know, tries to protect consumers and the Telephone Consumer Protection Act. Um, we sort of began that process, uh, really focused around phone calls and then expanded into other methods of communication. In 2015, um, it was updated specifically to include uh, exemptions for health care. So what it allowed for in 2015 is... Um, and this is not important to remember because everything changed last year, but just to give you a little bit of the history, uh, any important healthcare information, you were now allowed to make a call, send an email, send a text, um, and not necessarily have to have that express written consent. You didn't necessarily have to have that uh, express written consent opt-in to be able to communicate in more modern ways. 
But in 2015, it did not allow for billing or accounting related messages. So it allowed for things like uh, prescriptions, appointment reminders, or you know, other types of healthcare communications, as long as it didn't have anything to do with billing. So that's not, that's not good. I think that really kind of continued to reinforce paper statements within the healthcare industry. And then last year, Facebook of all companies took a case all the way to the Supreme Court and basically had the Telephone Consumer Protection Act decimated. And uh, what they argued over was the definition of an auto dialer. So that definition, the definition of an auto dialer is really what affects the rest of the rules written into the legislation. And so basically the Supreme Court redefined an auto dialer is something that uses phone numbers in sequential order or randomly generates a phone number. So if you are guessing at, at phone numbers, the TCPA is still in effect and applies. But in healthcare, patients are providing their phone numbers, they're providing email addresses, they're providing their contact methods. So now, um, the definition of an auto dialer, well, if somebody's providing you with their phone number and you're not automatically trying to create and generate phone numbers on your own, you're not using an auto dialer. So the, uh, basically the, the TCPA was decimated and really a big reason I think is most plans are unlimited. Um, it doesn't necessarily, uh, uh, people don't really incur a cost anymore to, you know, send and receive these types of messages. And so I think last year, uh, that Supreme Court ruling really opened the door to create more modern uh, means of patient financial engagement. We saw in the demo a few sides back that MEND can capture consents on behalf of customers. What is MEND doing to ensure compliance and best practices? Yeah, so one of the things that uh, we would do, and just to give some examples, is depending on the type of patient engagement you're using, it could be all sorts of things from scheduling and payments and telemedicine and all these different things. You know, there are uh, terms and conditions that, that, you know, MEND has, but we can also collect consents on your behalf to give your organization the best a posture for these new technologies that you're using. And so even though the door is open after the Supreme Court ruling in 2021, it's still going to be beneficial to just collect a consent. We showed it in a step just so you could have some context and see what it looked like. It's very easy. We, we all probably agree to different consents uh, on a daily basis, but uh, to be able to send a text and email, uh, include the information you want to include. We're going to recommend and give you a boilerplate, a text and email consent that you can have your legal counsel review, edit, and then we can collect it on your behalf. We're going to give you a boilerplate payment consent, whether it be you want to you know, store cards on file, charge them automatically, um, so on and so forth. We're going to give you those. You can have your, the, your legal counsel review it, and we can get those for you. And then we might have other things like electronic signature to sign the consents that, uh, you know, we just discussed. So we're going we're gonna to give you something for electronic signature. And then we're just going to make it easy for folks to review those consents, agree to those consents, keep them on file. We can integrate and send those back to the patient chart if you want. But we're going to do everything that we can to make sure you follow best practices and ensure that your organization is uh, protected uh, as you uh, choose to engage with folks in a more modern means. Matt, as a healthcare organization, what types of problems does a solution like this help to solve? Yeah, so, in, I mean, we saw a lot of this in the uh, class data as well. 
I think the benefits that we're seeing, we're seeing increased uh, uh, revenue cycle, so reduction in AR days. Um, we're seeing uh, groups save on uh, labor uh, that is not only expensive, but is, is even harder to retain these days. Um, so, you know, these manual process, I mean, we've seen some customers, they've got people stuffing envelopes with statements um, or, you know, doing, doing other uh, labor intensive processes. So there's big potential savings there. Um, folks are seeing an increase in overall collections. So we, we uh, uh, touched on that and even saw that in some of the class data. And then you've got uh, an increase in patient satisfaction. Again, we saw that in the, in the class data. So there's opportunities there, which just can lead to more loyalty, uh, especially amongst some of the younger generations. So there's a number of different pillars here and ways to win um, that, uh, you know, every healthcare organization that's sending paper statements should really be uh, taking a hard look at, you know, what, how they can make the process simpler for everybody. Before we get to the Q&A portion of today's event, our audience may or may not know that MEND is a complete patient engagement platform for in-person, virtual, or any type of visit. Matt, can you explain this further for our audience today as men can address more than patient payments? Yeah, so just to give a real quick overview on men and, and hopefully everybody found uh, the information a very informative and, and hopefully you, uh, you learned a few things. Um, but payments is really just one touch point in an, an entire journey. And so everything that you might need to cover uh, you know, a patient engagement strategy from before the visit, during the visit, after the visit, MEND can really handle all of those uh, touch points. So won't spend a lot of time here, but, you know, anything from patient self-scheduling to reminders to confirming, rescheduling, canceling appointments, digital forms, checking in, uh, making payments to the visit itself through telemedicine. I mean, we've got some really exciting things uh, there. And uh, so we do a lot of telemedicine, uh, host a lot of visits for customers. Then anything after the visit, maybe you need to push a survey out after the visit, um, or there's potentially a, a balance that's owed once we've, uh, um, you know, heard back and adjudicated from the uh, insurance company. So, and there's more that uh, other features that we offer as well, but MEND can really be one-stop shopping, one integration, one partner and we can help you execute a patient engagement strategy across payments, telehealth, forms, patient self-scheduling, you name it. If you are looking for more informative content, we keep a library in the resource section of the men.com website. We have a more in-depth product presentation of payments titled, How to Automate Patient Payments Before and After the Visit. Simply navigate to men.com, click on resources, and you can access all of our on-demand content there. In our white paper section, we have brand new content titled Patient Payment Trends in Healthcare. For those in our audience interested in this content, just go to men.com, click resources, and then click on to white papers. And with that, I'll pass it back to you, Jeanette, for the Q&A portion. Thank you. I just want to remind everyone in the audience that you can use the Q&A box to the left of your video window at any time. So the first question I have is, in your opinion, why hasn't everyone in healthcare adopted texting options for payments? Yeah, it's a great uh, question. And I think really this goes back to the um, telephone, uh, the TCPA, um, and some of the restrictions uh, specific to healthcare billing, where, um, you know, you needed express written consent to be able to text somebody um, or to, to place a phone call, especially if it was for a billing or accounting matter. And 
uh, basically seeing the Supreme Court change the definition of an auto dialer last year really opens the door to have a more modern experience in the way that uh, you execute a strategy for patient financial engagement. So the uh, you don't have to necessarily have the express written consent to send somebody a text message. Now, we're still going to recommend that you have that you do obtain a consent uh, as part of that process. Um, but to be able to uh, begin the initial engagement with somebody, you don't necessarily have to have that express written consent uh, any longer to be able to send somebody a text message. Great. So the next question is, are you collecting payments for telemedicine visits or in-person and telemedicine appointments? Yeah, great, great question. So our platform uh, was really built from the ground up for hybrid care. So everything we do spans virtual appointments, in-person appointments. We have phone appointment types. We have appointments maybe where social workers are going to, uh, you know, the location of uh, the particular uh, client. So um, everything that we do was built to span both. So we can really cover any type of appointment and really be one-stop shopping. So not only would there be opportunities for gains in patient financial engagement, but potentially even consolidating different vendors that you have into a single platform, a single experience, a single integration to maintain. And then anything you want to offer from scheduling, forms, um, payments, uh, everything can span any type of appointment, whether it be in-person or virtual. Okay. And um, I have two sort of related questions about text messaging here. So I'm going to kind of put them together. So how do you get patients to opt into text messaging? And then what can be done to push the opt-in for SMS or email at the beginning of the revenue cycle, pre-service or at the time of service? Yeah. So <clears throat> I think um, that now that the laws change in 2021. And I'm not an attorney. Mend is not an attorney. Um, you know, you want to still get that legal counsel, but that express written consent, that direct documented opt-in is no longer really a requirement. Um, as long as you're not, you know, randomly generating phone numbers. So, what we do is we do embed that opt-in and that consent into the process. And so we will still obtain and recommend that you obtain consents somewhere in that, that, that path of the, the process. But to be able to make some of these initial communications, um, the barrier of having an express written consent is no longer required. Again, you know, just verify that with your legal counsel, but with the Supreme Court ruling, which is the highest court of the land, um, the, the doors are definitely open and uh, the, the barriers have really been removed to engage in a, a much more modern uh, means. Okay. The next question is, do you use the grantor date of birth or the patient date of birth or both? Yeah, good, great, great question. Either one works. So whether it is a guardian or a ward, if that type of scenario exists and we are given that relationship um, through an integration, then we will attach both uh, uh, birth dates to allow entry in to make that payment. In some cases, we're only given the uh, date of birth of the patient. It just kind of depends on if you strictly force your staff to, uh, you know, have that that guardian uh, uh, ward relationship, or maybe you really just have that that patient record, and you might have the guarantor's details, you know, somewhere 
for insurance billing, but um, uh, maybe from an integration perspective, you don't always have that information or maybe staff doesn't always enter it in in a, con in a consistent format. So if you give us both, we'll use both. If you give us one, then one will be made available. Okay. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. I would like to thank our presenters for today's excellent webinar. I would also like to thank MEND for making today's program possible. Finally, I want to thank everyone in our audience for joining us. We hope you'll join us in the future for another healthcare innovation webinar. This concludes today's presentation.